Just, just before we begin uh, to this Mass here in this beautiful church, um, Our Lady of Perpetual Soccer, Fox Rock, um, in this church where Mick and Judy celebrated their marriage back in 1952, uh, may I, on behalf of all her family, welcome each and every one of you who have come from many different places. Um, first of all, her neighbours. There are people here, I'm sure, from places like Greystones, from Clonkeen Road, from Leash, um, from various parts of the city, and maybe other parts of the country as well. Um, I have a little note here, Tipperary is mentioned, and there may be other places that I'm not aware of. Um, I know a little later, Liam, on behalf of the family, will say a few words uh, towards the end of the Mass. Liam, we look forward to that. Um, my name is Joe. I'm based in a place called Mount Argus, over there in the Kimmage, Harless Cross area of Dublin. And I got a call the other day from Willie Doyle and his staff asking me could I come over to Fox Rock this morning and celebrate this Requiem Mass for, for duty. And I'm honoured to do that. And um, Willie gave me your contact number, Liam, and I've been in touch with you over the last couple of days and through you to the rest of the family. So may I acknowledge <coughs> each and every member of the family before we begin. I mentioned um, Judy's late husband, Michael, Lord Reston Mick, who passed away, I think in 1963, am I right, Liam? 19? 1973, my apologies. So we've, we've Margaret, we've Jared, we've Liam, we've Mary and Julie, and then we've the young generation in the family. We have grandchildren Michael, Leanne, Ben and Fiona. We've great-grandchildren Callum and Brooke. And when I mention grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I'm always tempted to um, reflect on a little expression I heard some years ago. And those of you who are grandparents will appreciate this. If I'd known how much fun grandchildren would be, I'd have had them first. <laughs> so a special welcome. Quite a few of you nodding your heads down there. My brother, my youngest brother, became a grandfather for the first time two years ago. And I think it's true to say he probably thinks more of his little granddaughter than he did of his own for, if you get my drift. Anyway, the rest of the family, we have um, Judy's brothers, Billy and Sean. We have her sisters, Molly, Bridie and Maggie. I love that name, Molly, because that was my mother's name, Lord Rester. 
Uh, we have other members of the family, sons in law, just like to acknowledge them Sam, Gary, and Brian. Uh, we have our daughters in law, Karen and Beth. And then, as I said, the younger uh, members of the family and extended family. So, there may be some of you who are here this morning who might not have known Judy, but you're here because you're a neighbour, colleague, or friend of some members of the family. Whatever the reason, or whatever your connection, or whatever you've come from, uh, you're all most welcome. I know that at 10 o'clock during the week here in Fox Rock, we would have a normal congregation uh, of people who would come here to the 10 o'clock Mass. So uh, may I welcome them very specially as well today. So I know it's a sad time. Those of us who have lost our mothers, and many of us have, it's, while it's a sad time for all of Judy's family after her long life, nevertheless it's right that we should, in commending our good soul to God, also to celebrate all the many blessings that God gave her, and very especially the blessings of her family. Uh, so for that reason, I'd just like to welcome Corman, who is providing the music, and Nicola, who will be singing. And Liam, I'm looking through the various notes that you passed on to me. Various members of the family will be involved in our readings by way of reflections and readings and prayers and so on. So we'll introduce them when the time comes. Okay, listen, I've gone on long enough, so let's begin. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Before we do anything else, I'm going to ask, um, I'm just looking around for someone to place the scriptures and the crucifix on, um, on Judy's remains. As you know, uh, she was blessed with a very strong faith, and she certainly nourished that faith in many different ways over the years, her prayer and particularly her celebration of the Eucharist. And I'm just going to place the scriptures now and the crucifix on her coffin to remind us that over the course of her long life she would have listened often to the word of God and many, many times she would have made the sign of the cross also as a sign of her faith and as a sign of God's love for each and every one of us. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Well, as I said, I've gone on a little bit longer than I had planned. So I'm just going to begin Judy's Mass with a little prayer, commending her to Almighty God. We include Mick as well, Lord bless him. And indeed all those members of the McAvoy, that was her maiden name, the McAvoy family and the Dowling family who have gone before us. So Lord Jesus, you tell us where two or three gather in your name that you are really present. We welcome you among us this morning here at Fox Rock as we celebrate this Requiem Mass for Judy. And thank you, Lord, for the gift of her long and good life and all the blessings that you gave her. We ask you, Lord, open wide the gates of heaven and welcome her home. For with the faith that was passed on to her by her parents and grandparents before her in her native county Leash, she truly believed in you as her Lord and Saviour. We ask a blessing on all her family and people who loved her and who were sad at this time. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We listen now to the word of God and Liam, I'm looking at your notes and We'd like to invite Margaret and Seamus and Sam here to the microphone and they'll share these readings with us. Margaret, Seamus and Sam. <coughs> right, John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you. The response for you, Sam. The response is, My soul is longing for the courts of the Lord. The sparrow finds herself a home, and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by your altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Response. They are happy who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. They are happy whose scent is in you, in whose hearts are the roads to Sion. Response. As they go through the bitter valley, they make it a place of springs. They walk with ever-growing strength. They will see the God of gods in Sion. Response. For the Lord is a rampart, a shield. He will give us his favor and glory. The Lord will not refuse any good to those who walk without blame. Response. This is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear, and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Please stand to greet the Gospel. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John glory to your Lord Jesus said I am the living bread come down from heaven he who eats this bread will live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world and this is the gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ could I invite you please to take a seat just for a little while, I won't go on too long. A 
Um, those of you who knew Judy well, and many of you certainly did, uh, will know, first of all, she lived a long life, born in 1926, I think. She was in her 88th, 89th year, and the years go by very, very quickly. And as you know, a very proud leash woman. <laughs> And I'm a very proud dog, and I have to say, I'm not sure if Mick or herself uh, were, were very involved in GA or whatever, but certainly at half time in Crow Park last Sunday, I was a very worried dog when Leash were leading us <laughs> by, by two points, but we, we managed to turn it around in the second half. Um, I mentioned earlier, as we brought, as we brought, um, Judy into the church. I mentioned that back in 1952, herself and Mick celebrated their wedding ceremony here uh, in this beautiful church, and they settled down, as you know, on Clonkeen Road. And uh, while I was speaking to Liam, I said to him, "Liam, will you tell me a little bit about about your mum's life?" And indeed, he did. And one of the things he certainly mentioned to me was. She absolutely loved um, not just her family, but she loved her garden. She loved to spend quality time in her garden. And I arrived uh, here quite early this morning, and I'm sitting outside in the car park watching everybody coming in from different places. And all kinds of thoughts were going through my mind. And one thing certainly occurred to me is that it occurs to me every time I celebrate a requiem mass, and that is, while there have been great changes in our city and in our country and indeed in our world since I was a boy growing up in Kimmage, one thing certainly hasn't changed, and please God it never will. And that is, when somebody we love dies, invariably we find great support and solidarity uh, from neighbours and colleagues and friends who rally round the family. Not that they can take away the sense of loss, obviously, that we feel when somebody very special passes away, somebody that we love dearly, but just to be there. And I'm sure Judy's family would be the first to say that about their neighbours, about her neighbours, and indeed their neighbours and colleagues and friends. So please God, that will never change. But as I said, one of the things Lee mentioned to me, she loved uh, to spend quality time in her garden. And I looked up a little poem which I'd like to share with you. And I don't know the words of it off by heart. I certainly know one particular verse. And I'd just like to share it with you. Um, and it's based on a lovely phrase in the third chapter of the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. Where it says simply, God walked in his garden in the cool of the day, okay? He walked in his garden in the cool of the day. You'll find that in, in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. And based on that lovely um, image, if you like, of God walking in his garden in the cool of the day, this little poem came to my mind, and you'll recognize it when, when you hear it. And it was written some years ago by a lady called Dorothy Frances Gurney. And one particular verse is well known and often quoted. And I'd just like to share this with you uh, as a memory, a very special memory of, of Judy and uh, her love of nature and her garden. <laughs> Liam said to me, um, her garden in Clonkeen was a cross between the beautiful hallowed grounds of, of Wimbledon and, and botanic gardens and, and beautiful places like, like that, okay? So this is how it goes. It's simply entitled God's Garden. And it goes like this. The Lord God planted a garden in the first white days of the world and he set there an angel warden in a garment of light enfurled. So near to the peace of heaven that the hawk might nest with the wren, for there in the cool of the even, God walked with the first of men. And I dream that these garden closes with their shade and their sun-flecked sod, 
and their lilies and bowers of roses were laid by the hand of God. And you know the next verse, the kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the birds for mirth. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. And the last verse, for he broke it for us in a garden under the olive trees where the angel of strength was the warden and the soul of the world found ease. And of course you can get that online if you just click in Dorothy Francis Gurney and the title of the poem is, is God's Garden. So I just thought I'd share that with you as just a reminder one of the aspects, many aspects of, of Judy's long and colourful and very fruitful life. I mentioned a little earlier um, those of us who have lost our mothers and many of us have will certainly appreciate the sense of loss that all of uh, Judy's family feel at this time and I came across um, another little poem uh, poetry is a very big part of my life and I came across a little poem some time ago and it was written by an Englishman called Edgar Guest well with a name like Edgar Guest he didn't come from Leash or Tipperary or Kerry or Cork or whatever he, he was from Yorkshire in England and uh, his mother passed away and he wrote this little tribute to her and before I share it with you uh, I would say that every family would say their mother was the best mother in the world we would say, have said that about my mother Lord Rester whose name was Molly as I said and uh, I'm sure Judy's family would say the very same about Judy so anyway this is how it goes and I hope I can remember, remember it all. I don't have the words with me. But uh, it goes like this. It's called A Mother's Watch. A Mother's Watch. And it's a tribute to Judy um, in her role as a mother in her family. As I said, Mick Lord Reston died quite suddenly, 1974. And um, Lee might, might make a reference to this a little bit later on. And Judy was left to fend uh, for the family, and she did cert she did that certainly with generosity and courage and great spirit. So they've absolutely a fantastic memories of her in her role as a mother. And I often say, of all the friends we make and relationships we form as we go through life, obviously the one with one's mother is unique and very special. If for no other reason, she gives us life, she carries us, she brings us into the world. And if we are lucky enough to have her as the years go by and we get older and maybe set up our own families and blessed with our own children and so on, we probably find she's our most loyal friend. There's a lovely piece in, 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 in the Old Testament from a book called the Book of Sirach and I often quote it, particularly in regard to one's mother. And it says there, a faithful friend is a sure shelter. Whoever finds one has found a rare treasure. There is nothing so precious in life as a faithful friend. No scales can measure their excellence. So I just quote that as a tribute to uh, the good friend I'm sure that Judy has been, not just within her own family, but indeed among her neighbours and friends. So anyway, the little poem, it goes like this. She never closed her eyes in sleep till we were all in bed. On party nights till we came home, she often sat and read. We little thought about it then, when we were young and gay, how much mother worried when we children were away. We only knew she never slept when we were out at night, and that she waited just to know we'd all come home all right. Why sometimes when we'd stay away, Till one or two or three, it seemed to us that mother heard the turning of the key. For always when we'd step inside, she'd call and we'd reply. But we were all too young back then to understand just why. Until the last one had returned, she always kept a light. For mother couldn't sleep until she kissed us all good night. She had to fear the world might harm the one she loved the best. More than once we heard her say when we stole her rest, When you are grown to women and men, perhaps I'll sleep the whole night through. 
things might be different then. And so it seemed that night and day when you were mother's care that always when we got back home we'd find her waiting there. Then came the night that we were gathered together round her bed. The children are all with you now, the kindly doctor said. And in her eyes there gleamed again that old time tender light that told she had been waiting just to know we were all right. So it's called A Mother's Watch and as I said I thought I'd share that with you as a tribute to Judy and her role as a mother. And I love that image, you know, as we're trying to creep through the hall door, coming in late and she's upstairs and she's listening and you're, you hope nobody will hear you coming in and the next thing you hear a voice, is that you? What time is it? What kept you? Where were you? You know, you know what goes on. I think we've all had that kind of experience to uh, don't be growing up so Lord rest her can I just conclude with a, a little phrase again from the Old Testament and you've heard it many times it's from the book of wisdom uh, and it, it says simply there the souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God and they are at peace that means good people go to heaven and by all accounts uh, listening to lovely things I've heard about Judy over the last couple of days she certainly was one such good person. So, Lord bless her. We commend her now to the love and care of her Father in heaven. Reunite with Mick, Lord rest him. And as I said, with all those members of the McAvoy and Dowling family. So, on behalf of us all, to each and every member of the family, our sincere and prayerful sympathy. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, that perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Judy, may your good soul souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace Amen now there's no need to stand just remain seated and Liam tells me that we have some prayers now I think it's Michael and Leanne is it who are going to share these prayers so may I invite them here to the microphone and then Mairead and Tom will bring the gifts to the altar We pray for Nan that she may be at peace with God in heaven. Lord, hear us. We pray in thanks for the many ways in which the goodness and kindness of our Nanny touched the lives of all who knew her. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all here present that the memory of Nanny whom we loved may inspire us with renewed love for our fellow men and women. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As you know, this church is dedicated to our Blessed Lady, Our Lady of Perpetual Succor. And it's a, it's a church that's, that was very important to Mick and Judy uh, in their lives because they celebrated their marriage here back in 1952. So we just say one Hail Mary, commend both of them to the love and care of our Blessed Lady, the Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Listen to the prayers, Lord, we make with faith. Grant what we ask with faith. We may be worthy to receive through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the offering. And as I said, I think Mairead and Tom are going to bring the gifts to the altar. And I think Nicola and Carmen are going to lead us in an offertory hymn.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord save the sacrifice from our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, accept these gifts of bread and wine that we offer for duty today. Listen to the prayers we make on her behalf and welcome her home to heaven for she believed in you as her Lord and Saviour. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give him thanks and praise. Father all powerful and ever living God. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. For your faithful people Lord. Life has changed not ended. When you call us at the end of life's journey. We gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. Now with all the choirs of angels in heaven we proclaim your glory. Join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We just say the short Eucharistic prayer. Lord you are holy indeed. The fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. In song now, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. resurrection we offer you father this life giving bread the saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit Lord remember your church throughout the world make us grow in love together with Francis our Pope and all who minister to your people remember Judy and make whom you've called from this life in baptism, they join the Christian community in life. We pray they are now with the community of all the angels and saints in heaven. A blessing on her family and on all of us gathered here. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them, give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Could I invite you all please to stand and we'll pray the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the King of the power and the glory are yours now and forever. We pray for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy in us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Could we invite you all to kneel down as we prepare for Holy Communion. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And if you'd like to receive, just come up by the side of Judy's remains. We'll give you Holy Communion. For anyone who wishes to receive from the, the chalice, particularly if there any seal, like there's a little chalice here, and you're welcome to receive from the chalice. Breast 
plate my sword for the fight be thou my armor and be thou my might thou my sword shelter and thou my high tower raise thou me reflection with us and, and Liam could we invite both of you up here to the to the microphone you're very welcome it's on you footprints one night I dreamed a dream I was walking along the beach with my lord Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. When the last scene of my life shot before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. There was only one set of footprints. I realized that this was at the lowest and saddest times of my life. This always bothered me and I questioned the Lord about my dilemma. Lord, you told me when I decided to follow you you would walk and talk with me all the way. But I'm aware that during the most troublesome times of my life, there is only one set of footprints. 
I just don't understand why, when I need you most, you leave me. He whispered, My precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never ever. During your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Hello, Harry. Um, I'd like to welcome you here today, and thanks for everyone to come. You know. Before I start talking about Mum, uh, I'd like just uh, a few things I want to get out of the way to thank a few people. I'd like to start off talk to thank some of the people in the medical profession that were great to Mum, her doctor Connor Downs, her GP and Greystones. I'd also like to thank the staff in the Greystones Medical Centre, for to Sam McConkey, Peter Bowles, and her carers Anne and Irene. I'd also like to thank Nicola for singing. Her mother and family, the McNamees, were loved by Mom. I'd also like to thank um, people who travelled long distances to be here today. I know a lot of Leash people are coming here and people coming from abroad. I'd also like to thank Father Joe Kennedy for the lovely service. It's beautiful. Also, on behalf of the family, I'd like to invite, after the burial, to the uh, Dune restaurant in the Royal Marine Hotel Dunleary for refreshments and a bite to eat. The parking is underneath the hotel and tickets can be redeemed at the reception. When my family came to me to ask me to say a few words about mom, to give people an idea of the great woman and mother she was, I thought this would be easy, but at no time I had about 20 pages written. So <laughs> I'll do my best in the short time I have to try and get across with an edited version. Her love of animals. Judy came from a farm in County Leash where she developed her love of animals from working on the farm. One day her, on her uncle's farm it was time to start the ploughing. The, farmers, the farm workers were having trouble getting uh, the plough horses halted. Due to that she required mum. Eventually mum went out, calmed the horses and she started ploughing the fields herself. And that was at age 19. <laughs> Uh, we have a lovely picture of mum uh, about that as well. She also loved dogs. She had a farm dog, Bess, and this dog adored her. When she would cycle to Rat Downey, and the dog would follow her down the lane. She would try to send it back, but the dog would run off into the field. And just as she arrived at Rat Downey, a couple of miles away, the dog would appear out of the ditch again, totally exhausted. <laughs> she felt sorry for the poor old dog, so she put him on the back carrier. <laughs> and then cycled home. From then on, she could be seen cycling into town or at only with a dog in the back carrier. They became familiar sight. A young girl with a dog in the back carrier and she became the talk of the town. Then mum was swept off her feet by her dad, Michael McDowling, who was a neighbour of hers from Rat Downey. They came to Dublin and got married. If you're ever in Leash, it's common to see uh, the coat of arms displayed of the seven steps of Leash, or the seven clans of Leash. In 1952, in this very church, two members of the clans got married, the Dowlings and the McAvoys. We have happy memories growing up in Clonkeen Road down here, where Mum was the pillar of the house. Dad worked away a lot, so Mum had to manage everything. The garage door was always open and was never a door locked. All our friends and neighbours could come and go any time. On the drop of a hat like an All-Ireland final, as Uncle Sean or Sean Costigan here would tell you, half of Leash would arrive at the house, where Mum would cater for all. The place would be buzzing. But 40 years ago, in 1974, as children, the bottom fell out of our world with Dad's sudden passing. Through her grief, Mum took over the role of the role of sole care provider. I went to work as a nurse in the National Rehabilitation Centre, Rochestown Avenue, working seven days, shifts, and raising a family at the same time. It was an indication of the strength and resolve she had. She was a dedicated nurse and carer who classed her work as a vocation. And uh, she was respected by staff and patients alike. Mum loved the garden, took great pride in it. One time... Uh, at one time I was working as an electrician down the country and after I gave her a phone call she informed me 
that someone was stealing vegetables at, the end of the, end of, uh, at night from the end of the garden. When I got back I asked, was she still having the problem? She said no. I hid down the garden one night and I dressed up in an old black coat and hat and took a big stick. <laughs> now you're getting the idea. She says, as three guys arrived over the back wall they were met with a severe beating from my mum. As they tried to scramble back over the wall. Needless to say, not a scallion went missing after that. I came home and I said to her mom, uh, uh, then, I said, you can't do things like that. She says, I've worked hard for this and I'm not going to let anyone steal it. This is an example of the courage she had. By the way, the locals thought it was me and I had a great street cred after that. You know? <laughs> <coughs> About 14 years ago, I got a call from work. It was a guard from Kill of the Grange station saying mum would be hit, hit by a car crossing Clonkeen Road and that things weren't good and it looks like she wasn't going to make it I don't think he knew her mum very well a half ton of metal wasn't going to stop her when I arrived into Vincent's emergency she was sitting up and joking with everyone this is with two broken legs and a head injury with mum's determination we were blessed to have another 14 years during this time she nurtured and created special relationships with her children and grandchildren Even after the accident, I arrived to the house on Clonking Road one day to visit her. I couldn't find her anywhere. Where was she? Up on the garage roof. <laughs> she was painting the roof with a bit of sealant to fix a leak. She said to my sisters after, I don't think Liam was too pleased with me, was he? <laughs> okay. There, there, there are six of mum's family, and up to last year, they would all meet every year in Fort Leash in my cousin Anne Peel and her husband Eamon's house where a big spread would be laid on and a few glasses of wine would go down and the reminiscing and the sing song would start. They were all great lovers of Irish music and they're all great singers. At this point I would like to mention her brother Bill McAvoy, aged 91, uh, mum's eldest brother, in Long Island, New York and I wish him a speedy recovery as he's disappointed through health reasons he's unable to be here today. And I know with the aid of modern technology he's watching via the church's webcam. Billy is a great, great fiddle player himself and one of the founders of Celtic Celtorina Hearn in America and was the chairman for 45 years and current president there. One of the songs that used to be sung at the table there could be started by Auntie Molly there or, or Auntie Bridie was Danny Boy, which we might hear more of it later. For all those here that didn't know Judy, I hope you now have a better picture of her. And for those who did know her, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Most of all, she was a great mom. The best. It's time to put your feet up. I feel like the hard work is done. Thank you. Lovely, lovely tribute, Liam. Thank you. Thank you. We just leave it at that. Before, uh, just before we, we leave this beautiful church in Fox Rock, may I uh, personally just thank uh, Tom, our sacristan, and Barry and Bernard, members of the bereavement team who were involved in Judy's Mass here today, and the warmth of the welcome that I have received. It's always such a welcoming place. And I often say, going up and down the road over the years, what a beautiful sight and a beautiful place it is. And as Lee mentioned, this is the church where Mick and herself got married and um, good memories. And this, I know this church would have been very, very special uh, to Judy. And it's appropriate that, you know, on the final stage of her journey back to the good God who created her, that we would gather here in this place and bid her farewell and commend her good and kind soul uh, to, to, to God our Father. We just leave it at that. Uh, could I, as a mark of respect, could I ask you please to stand and we just have a little ceremony called Final Commendation and you've heard it I'm sure many times and it goes like this. Before we go our separate ways we take leave of Judy today. May our farewell express her family's love and affection for her. May it ease their sense of loss, strengthen their faith one day they will joyfully greet her again in heaven. And as you know, she, she had a very, very strong faith, inherited no doubt from her parents, 
and grandparents in her native county Leash many years ago. We bless her now with holy water and incense to remind us of the special place she had, not just within her own family, but indeed within the Christian community. And our response, receive her soul, present her to God most high. Receive her soul. Saints of God, come to Judy's aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Judy, may Christ who has called you take it to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Into your hands, God our Father, we commend Judy today in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. In thanking you today, Lord, for the gift of her long and fruitful and good life and all the lovely memories that our family have of her through the years, we ask you open wide the gates of heaven and welcome her home, for she believed in you as her Lord and Saviour. We pray that in heaven, with all the communion, community of the angels and saints, She's reunited with people like Mick, with all those members of the McAvoy and Dowling families who have gone before us, and our own dear departed as well, for we've all been bereaved. In peace now we bring Judy to her place of rest at Dean's Grange Cemetery. <laughs> 